After the huge success that was Battlefield 1 in 2016, EA went on to shoot dice in the foot by releasing Star Wars Battlefront 2, a game that probably caused one of the biggest controversies the industry has ever seen, resulted in countries around the world enforcing laws regarding loot boxes and other gambling practices. EA's stock had fallen dramatically and their popularity as a publisher was at an all-time low, with their most successful games still being their sports games. EA and DICE needed a win and fans needed a new battle Battlefield game or new IP that could win them back and gain faith in this once great company. With this worrying time ahead, DICE announced they were working on a brand new Battlefield, one that would be set in World War II and would take the game back to where it all began for them, a spiritual successor to Battlefield 1942 some could say. But in May 2018, Battlefield's YouTube channel released the first look at what was Battlefield 5 and this, this was the talking point of the year. <laughs> Hello, old friend. What did this mean for the series? Was it an alternate universe or take on World War II? Why was there a female British fighter with a prosthetic arm and a barbed wire cricket bat fighting in what looked like a frontline battle? Gamers were angered by this decision to completely scrap all historical accuracy. But DICE and EA didn't accept this criticism and hit back stating it was to tell the untold stories of World War II, focusing on things that many people didn't know about, but then went on to say one of the worst statements in PR history. History, telling players if they didn't like the direction, then don't buy it. On the 20th of November 2018, after a two month delay, Battlefield 5 finally released. Well, it released half of the game anyway. Lacking content on launch and having DICE say to its player base not to buy it, sales for Battlefield 5 were the worst it's ever been in the series history. Selling under half of what Battlefield 1 managed in its first week, DICE saw one of the lowest turnouts for a Battlefield game. Endless criticism hit the studio as well as tons of impact important content was missing from the game, meaning servers were almost empty and players were going back to Battlefield 1. Two weeks after the launch, EA announced it was giving loyal Battlefield players the chance to buy this new experience for 50% off, showing how bad this game had sold as well as being a big screw you to anyone who was loyal enough to buy it on release. Three years later and the game is now finalised. Well, the team is finished with it anyway, and I thought it was finally time to look back at Battlefield 5 to see if it was really that bad game everyone claimed it to be in 2018, and see what was good and bad about its campaign, multiplayer, and the all-round user experience. So welcome to Wisefish, and this is my review of the somewhat finished game, Battlefield 5. Have you ever opened up a game, played the first few minutes and thought, hold on, have I played this before? Well this is exactly how I felt with Battlefield 5 as it copied literally the same template from Battlefield 1, which if you haven't watched my Battlefield 1 review, you'll know that the war stories for me were an interesting concept but really badly executed and missed a lot of opportunities to make a really hard hitting campaign. DICE going into Battlefield 5, as mentioned in my introduction, wanted to tell of battles and stories that not many works of fiction have told before, exploring some of the other countries or factions that are involved in this global event. Event. And without talking about any stories in particular, I do think this idea had a good intention. It's always nice to explore these things, but I feel like for a game that was meant to be the spiritual successor for Battlefield 1942, it needed to explore some of the bigger battles, especially in this fantastic engine that DICE work with. And I feel like right off the bat, this was the biggest problem with Battlefield 5. Going into the actual war stories themselves, it starts off really well again. It sets up a nice tone for what this game is about. It's grand in scale, it's emotive, it's enjoyable, a nice little introduction to what this game will be about. The music is epic, the gameplay is fun, and graphically it looks beautiful. The link to Battlefield 1 as well right off the bat was really nice, it felt like a continuation and I really liked that. When booting up this game I got to admit I had a good first impression, but all round like with Battlefield 1's prologue it sets the scene well and displays what DICE's anger was for this game, but like with Battlefield 1 that's where it ends. I honestly feel at this point DICE and Battlefield are just better off doing big battle prologue style missions instead of 
try to do short stories as they are better at setting up emotive stories than actually executing them. With that said, however, I did much prefer two of the stories within this campaign compared to Battlefield 1 stories. Tyrallia, or however it's said, tells the story of the French colonial forces who want to do anything to prove to the regular French troops that they are just as good if not better at fighting and want nothing more than to make the people back home proud of them and allow for future generations to be recognised as equals. It's a nice story between two brothers and I felt like it was quite personal and tragic at the end as they are removed from history just to appease the French public and officials. I know a lot of people complain that it was insulting to France and that this didn't really happen, it's just identity politics, but sadly these things did happen happen and I felt like this story captured the emotions of those troops well. Believe it or not the other story I quite liked was the final mission of the war stories, the one added after the launch, The Last Tiger. It's quite a risky move honestly to tell a story of, and yes I will say it even if DICE EA don't want to, but playing a Nazi officer was something I hadn't really done before, especially one during this point in the war. It told the story of basically these guys doing this. Hands. Are we the baddies? Whilst I got to admit some bits were a bit cliche driven and at times it felt like they were really trying to push this narrative of everyone is just a human in this war, I actually quite liked how dark it was and how these troops realised it was all lies, everything they believed was wrong, as their newest recruit is still full of energy ready to fight back in an impossible war, attacking anyone who disagreed, much like the Nazi party did. Honestly, I was surprised, I liked the story more than I expected and I did didn't honestly feel it was controversial at all. It still portrayed Nazis as bad guys, but it gave some humanity to some of the soldiers as well. It was short, sweet, and told a story that I personally found quite interesting. But then we have Under No Flag, which I thought I'd like as it's the British troops fighting for the Special Boat Service Unit in North Africa. But for some reason, they ditch the boat setup and just become a two-man army against the whole forces of the Nazi army. Also, it is insulting that they suggest that all of the British commandos were criminals. I mean, how insulting to all of the people that actually fought. That was not the case at all. They were a mixed bag of people from all different backgrounds and I cannot believe they went with that narrative at all. But there was just nothing interesting about this story at all. It felt like a weak version of the runner from Battlefield 1. It's just so poor and I'm sorry but the voice actors are bad in this war story. I'm British and from London and I found it hard to understand what the hell they were saying a lot of the time. Which brings me on to a small tangent. Why, why, why did they make the subtitle text white with no background or shadow to make it stand out? I cannot see any of the subtitles in some of the damn levels because they are just washed out by the lighting and the terrains. Also they speak during battles making it almost impossible to to see what they are saying during that battle. I love the French campaign, but I wish they didn't have them speak vital lines of dialogue during a battle where I cannot read and fight at the same time. I love that they use their own languages within the stories, but come on, be creative with the subtitles, or just make them easy to see. There are so many accessibility options for people, yet the fundamental basic one of text is an absolute joke. Okay, and finally we have Nordleys, the story about a mother and daughter who sabotage the hard water facility which was helping to make nuclear weapons within Norway. Many people have said this before but I have to agree this mission is the most insulting of them all. They had the opportunity to tell a great story within the war about these groups of soldiers who infiltrated the facility and took over without firing a single shot but instead they got rid of those guys completely and replaced them with just a lone female soldier who has less personality than a wet cloth. This mission wouldn't be bad if they just at least mentioned the ones who were involved in that operation, but instead they make it out like this story actually happened, or that it was all totally fiction. It's just outrageous honestly, all because DICE were adamant on having a female soldier because of what the CEO's daughter couldn't figure out why women weren't in World War II. I, I just don't 
didn't get it. If DICE wanted a female lead character, they could have explored so many other stories, like Pavlenchenko, or however it's pronounced, the famous Polish sniper, Nancy Wake, a New Zealand guerrilla fighter who dropped into occupied France and took out Nazis and their buildings, or Medal of Honor's heroine Manon Baptiste, who was part of the French resistance. They could have explored so many different female characters who were actually involved in the war fighting on somewhat front lines. They could have even looked at Russia and the revolutionaries in that. They actually were women fighting on those front lines. It just makes no sense. But instead they took an event which was a group of male operatives who lost some of their comrades before and turned it into a mother and daughter story. I ask you why? That's my problem with Battlefield 5. It felt like false marketing. It told us it was to explore untold stories never heard before, but instead just made them up and changed them for their own narrative. And whilst I really liked the French story and The Last Tiger, I just cannot enjoy this move from DICE. It's just insulting really. To also chicken out of putting the Nazi symbol in a game about the events of World War II makes no honest sense to me in the slightest. If you're scared of putting a Nazi symbol anywhere, maybe don't do a World War II shooter. I get that the Wehrmacht was all the armed forces of Germany combined, but when you go round the streets of Germany itself, it would have had the Nazi party symbol, not the Wehrmacht symbol. It just makes no historical sense at all, and it's not as symbolic to see Berlin fall when you haven't even got the Nazi party flag flying anywhere. I just don't get what story they wanted to tell here. Are you telling the events of World War II, or is this an alternate universe take on World War II. You have to pick one because it cannot be both. They did it back in the day when they did Secret Weapons of 1942. That was an alternate timeline. So if you wanted to do that, then you can do it. But instead, you stick by the fact that this is World War II and then tell your own stories to fit your agenda. It just makes no sense. Also, I swear there was meant to be another story. We see a few times in the prologue dogfights and Luftwaffe battles and even get some plain gameplay. Yet there's no plain story at all. It seems like it was just cut out completely. Maybe because that would have been two German stories in the campaign, which would really look a bit weird honestly. But again, this could have been saved by gameplay. And yet again, like with Battlefield 1, I just did not enjoy my time in these campaigns. They were all so bland. For some reason, Battlefield thinks it's Far Cry with its level design, opening up every single map into a multi-objective open world where you stealth your way through. I just don't enjoy that. I played Battlefield for its large scale conflicts and working with a squad to get the job done. But apparently DICE has this obsession with making you the lone wolf and going through it alone with everything. Why in God's name do I have to do everything. At least with the French story we got an awesome charge up the mountain, but it doesn't take long until you turn into a lone wolf trying to take out enemies all around you. Why do they focus so much on stealth? It bugs me so much. And large open maps, sure they're cool at first, but they get so repetitive after a while. I really really hope they do something different with Battlefield 6. Also the final point, but stealth is even worse in this game. The spot meter during levels is white with no backdrop. You cannot see this at at all in snow missions. Also in Battlefield 1 during these stealth bits, they made sure you had options in terms of how you go about it, giving you sniper areas with silenced weapons. In Battlefield 5, they expect you to stealth your way through, then cause a huge explosion. Defeats the point of stealth really, doesn't it? I just really hate how they seem to not be able to give us something that is what makes Battlefield great, and that is large scale mad combat. Instead, they just want us to do the same tasks each time in a similar style to Far Cry. But if I want that, I'll play Far Cry. But again, I know Battlefield is not played for its campaign, but I just felt like they could have done so much here. A story in the heart of Europe, maybe on D-Day, the Battle of Britain, Monte Cassino, the Battle of Stalingrad, Battle of Iwo Jima, where the American flag was raised, or even some of the ocean battles which have been forgotten about. It feels like it just missed so many opportunities once again, and just left me craving a World War II game that explored these iconic battles which helped win the war. I like bits of Battlefield 5's war campaign, but I can't help feel like I had a sour taste in my mouth after I was finished playing them, as if DICE had just spat on parts of history.
I've been really umming and ahhing about how I feel about Battlefield 5's multiplayer because after coming from Battlefield 4 and Battlefield 1, I knew what I liked about Battlefield's multiplayer and how combat felt. And when I jumped into Battlefield 5, I felt like there was something wrong. I could never see people. I felt like the guns weren't doing what I wanted and it just didn't feel like Battlefield to me. I think because the game had been slowly trying to appease people from more of the casual market, Battlefield 5 felt like it was the first step in going towards more of a Call of Duty audience and I felt myself really not liking it. But I stuck with it and after a good few sessions, I got to admit I got to liking it a lot after a while, especially the gunplay. But that's not to say that I like all of Battlefield 5's multiplayer. In fact, I really do think this game is the biggest downgrade out of all the games and has so many negatives that sadly will never be altered. To start with, I want to talk about what I liked about this game's multiplayer. The guns really grew on me and after a while I got a real feel for how they worked. I absolutely loved the feeling of them, they are so responsive and for me the M1 Garands now has finally been added to the sandbox is such a fun weapon to use. That iconic sound as you finish your magazine as well is just so cool. But I really liked experimenting with all the guns. I think every single one had their own playstyle to them and they all felt different from one another with some amazing sound design to make them really pack a punch in combat. And let's be honest, the full sound design of this game really shows in some massive multiplayer games, especially in Breakthrough and Conquest. The sound of Spitfires flying overhead and gunning down capture points and fortifications was ear-piercing and epic. The explosions happening all over the map, the gunplay in different terrains, and let's not forget the incredible V1 bomb. Man, this thing is just insane. Hearing this horrible sound overhead, trying to look for it as you wonder if it's going to hit you, then that huge blast as it takes out a full area and catapults you back. Man, it's just so cool to witness and use, no matter what side you're on. Speaking of the V1 bomb, I actually like the squad leaders were given things the more points they get. We sort of lost that in Battlefield 1 and it was something that really drove squad play in Battlefield 4. The more you work together, the more points you get, the more upgrades you get. I love having the options when you're a squad leader to activate bombing runs or if your squad is going really well, activating a V1 bomb run. It helps keep that focus on squad work and at the end of some game modes it becomes this epic bombardment of squad leaders and their abilities. The final thing I like about Battlefield 5 now has to be the Pacific maps. This isn't to say they are perfect, there are some parts of the maps where it's like looking for a needle in a haystack and people just camp in forest making for some frustrating gameplay, but I would argue it's somewhat fitting of what the Pacific would have been like. But the actual maps within this work so well for the gameplay and being able to do beach invasions was so cool even if it is a bit unbalanced at times. My most fun in Battlefield 5 came from doing the breakthrough game modes and conquest modes in the Pacific maps. They are great maps, really varied, have epic introductions to them, are visually stunning especially with the dynamic weather and also the update brought in some fantastic old iconic and new guns to the sandbox as well as new vehicles which look great and some cool cosmetics. Honestly if it weren't for the Pacific update I would have quit this game quickly but the Pacific captured me and allowed me to have a lot of fun. But what I dislike about this game is a lot of the other maps. I don't know what it is but I really struggle to like any of the base game maps at all or any of the Europe maps or North Africa maps. They are either far too big with just so much empty space which is good for vehicle battles but just awful with your infantry and I saw some people say well there's places you can hide or fortifications to build for cover. Nah maybe back in the start of the game but now when I play vehicles just camp these areas meaning you just have to stick to one location or get in a vehicle making for honestly some awful conquest games. All the maps are too small and the game mode is just really boring. Twisted Steel and Arras were the only ones I felt like I actually enjoyed from the main ones. Narvik and Fjell 652 are just simply painful to play because of how bright it is and how linear the maps are. Even the sort of remastered ones like Operation Underground I wasn't a fan of and I loved Operation Metro but something just feels off here. They're either far too large that it just makes it boring to play unless you love vehicle combat, far too small like Fjell or just really un inspiring like Rotterdam in my opinion. Whilst visually lots of them look great especially with the dynamic weather I just can't say I enjoyed my time in them. Like with the campaign I really felt like they needed some big memorable maps like D-Day or Stalingrad, the early battles of France, Battle of Britain
action like Battlefield 1942 had. Instead, these maps are of battles barely anyone knows, and it just makes fighting there a bit uninspiring compared. Pacific was going in the right direction, and it was awesome to see some of the big battles of the war there. But this game needed some of those iconic European operations and the Eastern Front to really stand out. It's so sad that the game has been dropped completely and we will never see Stalingrad or any of the big battles there. Sure we got some in Battlefield 1 but this is a totally different war and I would have loved to have seen Battlefield 5's take on the Eastern Front. There's also the game modes, there's barely any choice. Literally the only things people play in 2021 are Conquest and Breakthrough. That's it and who can blame them? Maps are just designed for those specific modes and nothing else really. Team Deathmatch is a joke honestly, I don't bother playing it. And Grand Operations just feels like a joke compared to Battlefield 1's fantastic operations, where no matter the outcome you will always move forward to the next map or next day, meaning it just doesn't feel as rewarding or anything. It never feels like you earn the victories in my opinion, be that defending or attacking. Such a wasted opportunity here, it could have seen some epic battles like those in the operations in Battlefield 1. Sure, Airborne was cool at first, but I personally didn't really enjoy it. It just felt too easy for the enemy team to take down planes and attackers. The maps also just seem disconnected. There's no real fluidity to why one follows the next. It just feels completely random, especially when you compare it to the story and structure of the operations within Battlefield 1. The latest and final update of Battlefield 5 was Community Games, which is great for allowing people to create what they want by renting servers and such. But again, because maps are designed for specific things, even if you wanted to create a server for a specific game mode, it probably won't be good because they are specifically designed for conquest or breakthrough, so it just doesn't really work. Also, people only seem to have servers for conquest or breakthrough, so it's really no different. Going into more of the gameplay, and I just feel like the time to kill is ridiculously short in this game still. I thought at first maybe it was just me playing badly, and yeah, sometimes it is. But I went back to Battlefield 4, and no, this game is ridiculously fast paced, not allowing you to really make mistakes at all. It feels like Call of Duty really, and I really didn't like that. I love the gunplay, but man, the time to kill was insanely short here. Going around the corner and you meet an SMG user, it's basically game over, especially anyone that uses the goddamn Type 2A gun. That gun's killed me so many goddamn times, it's just frustrating now. Speaking of which, why are the classes locked off to having specific guns? I just don't get it. Why do medics have to have the SMGs? Why are assaults locked to having carbines? And someone please tell me why support are allowed LMGs, MMGs and shotguns. I don't get why classes lock off weapons and you can only play medic with SMGs. I love playing as a medic but I enjoy it more with carbines or bolt action rifles. But the game doesn't allow me to have that choice. It makes me crave Battlefield 4 with all its different guns that that I could choose not really limiting me on my choice. Also, I feel like this was the first game where people didn't fully work together as a team. Sure, I mentioned the squad bonuses, but honestly, unless you're a squad leader, you don't get any benefits, apart from a few hundred points. Squad healing is really cool and can help in tough situations, but I really felt with the self-healing of players that the medic was underwhelming here. Usually I go as one all of the time, but I didn't feel like I had anything special compared to other roles apart from a faster revive time. Sure, I can revive the other team members, but I don't know, I just didn't feel as important as a medic in this game. Probably doesn't help that everyone seems to play as one as their guns seem so overpowered in multiplayer with insane time to kill. Also, who came up with the idea of having a dying screen where your player calls out for help? It makes this game feel super comical as your character lies on the floor screaming his head off. Just give me that classic death cam that we had previously. This flaming about is so ridiculous honestly. Sometimes you get blown up by a tank you think there's no way you're surviving that just for your player to turn on his back and go help i need your help <laughs> it's just a joke also the voice actors my word where did they get them some of the lines are absolutely hilarious especially the british throwing a bomb good to see you again matey i've been bloody shot there's blood there's blood everywhere and the hilarious screams from the female soldiers 
I'm sorry, but it's just too comical to take seriously. Also, the voice of the announcer sounds like it's from a more modern setting. I find it very odd, this choice of recording style. I much prefer Battlefield 1's as it feels like it fits the setting more. Here it just sounds like a cross between Modern Warfare and CSGO. The building mechanic as well is questionable. There's a full game mode devoted to this mechanic and whilst there were times where I felt like it was quite unique and quite fun to play around with, I can't help but think it's just trying to copy Fortnite and I know that's controversial. I like how it can make defensive modes feel a bit more tactical but most of the time all it takes is one bombing run and that's gone. Personally for me it was just weird and very annoying when you can't fully build things because one tiny bit of debris is blocking the way. It's an interesting thing to bring into Battlefield but I'm not that amazed by it honestly. The gun upgrades is far better than Battlefield 1's but I feel like it's so limited on what you can do. Don't get me wrong I like to see progression on guns but it doesn't take long to upgrade it and then that's it. Next thing is just getting skins for it which cost an absolute fortune. This game's currency system is a joke and clearly trying to get players to spend money as you can see from the shop that has the recommended currency amount. Yeah sure you can do weekly events and tasks but some of these skins cost thousands of coins which equals to at least a good eight hours of more of gameplay. Why would I spend that on slightly different colored trousers when I can upgrade my gun which actually make the difference. There's other legendary characters you get as part of customization, but everyone plays as the same guy. It just makes customization look so limited when you have like five people on your team look like the same bearded dude. I don't know, I think the customization is quite vast and cool in areas. It's so much better than Battlefield 1 and there's lots to play with, but trying to save up these coins is just a real chore and I gave up with customizing after all. While. I was also going to put a full section here about Firestorm, the Battle Royale game mode, but well, I couldn't find a single game countless times, so whilst I had things to say about it from playing it back in the day, the game is completely dead, so that just kind of sums it up. But the final thing I'll say about the multiplayer is, this is probably the worst Battlefield game I have played simply due to how much camping there is. With people just lying prone, making them near invisible, or parking up a tank on top of a mountain, and then just sniping people from a distance, or sitting on a cannon at their spawn, and just taking out enemies at a capture point. I just hated how much damn camping there was in this game. So much to the point where people cared more about sniping and camping in vehicles than actually pushing up to a point and playing the objective, ruining battles. I don't get it, and it's not helped by the change in the ping system, which I honestly really dislike. Sure, maybe it's more hardcore in its feeling, but I just really hated it honestly, especially when the ping doesn't always go where you want it, and it's so hard to see it a lot of the time. On top of that, people still don't play their roles. With medics being this chosen class people like to play because of the guns, a lot just don't bother with healing or reviving players and it is just beyond frustrating. Also squad healing is cool but some people just don't bother and again what is the point in playing a squad focused tactical game like Battlefield if you don't play the objective? Also why is it only four people in a squad? How did we go from six to five to now four? It's just madness. But seriously, there are moments in Battlefield 5 where I feel like this was actually a fun experience, but it is nothing compared to previous titles. It really is so limited on fun. Roles are cut down, squads are small, maps are 80% trash and 20% awesome, gameplay changes have made the game feel far more like a bigger version of COD, and the limited amount of different game modes just means you'll be regurgitating the same things over and over again. I like the feel of the guns, I love the specific maps. I like some of the improvements the game has made, but it's just not finished. It needs more and unfortunately every time I play it, it just makes me want to boot up Battlefield 1 or Battlefield 4 again, as those games just offered me so much more fun. I can understand why lots play it and enjoy it, but for me, it's just another missed opportunity to make something that could have been the spiritual successor to Battlefield 1942, or just one of the best World War II games out there. Instead, it's a huge step down in my honest opinion.
I don't want to talk for too long on this bit because, well, you've been watching the footage, so you'll know how you feel about the graphics really. But in my honest opinion, the game looks fantastic, especially with RTX on. I do personally prefer Battlefield 1's overall desaturated look, but I think this game is stunning, especially on levels like Arras. But with that said, the lighting is pretty damn awful at times. On some maps, it is just so washed out and overexposed that I cannot see a thing. And when going from outside to inside a building or vice versa, if there's an enemy there, you will most likely not see them because of the exposure. Rotterdam is almost unplayable at times, making for extremely bright areas and extremely dark areas, and you just know a camper will be in your blind spot. Also, whilst dynamic weather is super cool in some maps, visibility makes it a chore for gameplay, especially in deserts. Whilst you can say, well, it's just realism, it's cool, there's making the game visually stunning and then there's making it fun. I don't find the weather makes this game fun really more frustrating. I love maps changing as much as the next person, but when visibility becomes a strain, I just lose my sense of fun. And maybe that's just a me problem, but I never experienced it in any other Battlefield game to this extent anyway. Guns look fantastic, textures look incredible, it's just standard Battlefield EA looking game that is very impressive, but it's still plagued with bugs, especially graphical ones. I had so many textures popping into play during my time and bodies just glitching about. This bit here, my character's body was angled 45 degrees away from my head. I mean, what? I do feel like the choice to have your body visible as you lie down when you're dying was a weird choice as well. So many times it felt like my body was just flinging itself about and it really just looked awful. I get what they were going for in terms of the line on your back to shoot, but visually I just think it looks awful. In the campaign, specifically the last Tiger mission, there are some objects just floating in the sky. There are just cables hanging there for no reason. It just looks so so ugly and pulls you out of the immersion. How does this campaign still have broken things after all these years and this was the campaign that was delayed on launch? I mean what the hell? In the Norway story as well, the animation for the mother seems to be in a totally different frame rate from the rest of the gameplay. She just stutters about the map and it's just really off-putting. I don't know what causes this but again it's just another eyesore and I see why they now just make you a lone wolf because clearly friendly AI characters just don't look that good. Moving on to multiplayer, Battlefield 5 has the most amount of cheating players I've experienced in all my time in the franchise. Almost every game would have someone getting streaks in the plane despite never really being that visible. People sniping under the mat, tanks headshotting people, invisible players, the list goes on and on. Every game had something and again it ruined all the experience. I guess there's more hackers because of the currency and progression system but man it's just so awful and really sad to be honest. I hated it in Battlefield 1 but Battlefield Battlefield 5 seems so much worse. The server browser again is just rubbish, it's either filled with full games or there are just none at all. I don't get what the hell is going on with their servers, but when you compare Battlefield 5's to Battlefield 4's, something is seriously wrong. Countless times I was just in an empty match waiting for people to join and just no one showed up at peak times as well. I thought the game was dead, but then the next minute it's fully populated in another game. What is going on with the servers and why when I press quick play do I get brought into matches with no one playing? Oh and yeah Firesom still doesn't have anyone. As well as that most of the time games are just so unbelievably unbalanced making for outright slaughters. That or people just leave the game because it's too hard to push up or something meaning what is the point? I find this a lot during the beach pushes in the pacific maps. If you don't push up to at least the third objective people just leave and it just ruins the game completely as there seems to be no attempt at rebalancing the game at all like you get in other battlefield games. The UI is awful again and the HUD isn't that impressive either, but I'm just preaching to the choir at this point. The spawn system is a joke, sometimes it will allow you to spawn then instantly take you out because either there's no room or an enemy starts firing, but if you spawn in a vehicle that is being shot at it doesn't care and it will just blow you up. There's also times where it will spawn you so close to enemies and you get killed instantly. There's no consistency to its spawns, it's just a joke. Lots of things have been altered since its launch, like the planes not being able to bomb you instantly on spawn, but still the game just doesn't feel polished two almost three years on, and I am stunned that it is still somewhat broken, especially when it comes to its server browsers that are quite frankly awful most of the time. Dice. EA. And what happened with this game? I really do feel like DICE were just pushed far too hard to make a game 
every year. To sum up my thoughts on Battlefield 5, it's not the worst game ever. It's certainly not total rubbish you should never play, but it just doesn't feel like a full Battlefield game like Battlefield 3, 4 and the previous games were. It needed more content and sadly we will never get that. It needed more time but EA wouldn't allow that. And it needed to decide whether it wanted to be a true telling of untold stories or alternate takes that were stated as being based on true events instead of basically insulting true heroes of war and making it fit an agenda. I really hope EA and DICE learned that if you upset a player base and tell them they are wrong, they will hit back, and I can't believe they didn't realise this after Battlefront 2. But here we are in 2021 and I find more people playing Battlefield 4 and Battlefield 1 than I do with Battlefield 5. Maybe that is because the gameplay choices have veered away from what made Battlefield so good, or maybe that's just because the game is still unfinished, or maybe that is because EA and DICE did such a poor job at convincing players to actually play this game. But for me, it is just another EA game that had so much potential and completely trashed DICE's name, making for a World War II shooter that honestly doesn't feel like it is set in World War II. A real shame, but honestly, I am not surprised at this point. So those are my thoughts on Battlefield 5, now it is sort of finished. What did you guys think? What did I get right or wrong? And what did you like or dislike about Battlefield 5? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching. If you'd like to support this channel, like, sub and share would be much appreciated. And you can follow me on Twitter and Discord by hitting the links in my description below. I also have a link to my other Battlefield reviews in the description below if you want to watch them. You can also support me financially through my Patreon or becoming a channel member if you really like this content. And speaking of which, I'd like to thank my supporters real quick. Big thanks to our big fish, Mr. Duquesne23, our two sharks, JP and Dylan, and our four huge megalodons, Sinus, Morgan Brazier, JJD896, and Wow Such Gaming. Also a big shout out to our Wise One YouTube channel member, Jambu. Thank you guys so much for your ongoing support. It means the world to me. But that is all for now. Thank you all so much for watching once again. I will be looking at Battlefield 4 next as part of my Battlefield series as well as making some lore videos so make sure you turn your notifications on for that but until then I shall see you all in the next one. Cheers.